Good evening from Dubai. Today, our subject is very, very, very interesting and it is something that we have to mention in a separate uh, live event because we have mentioned it earlier in the nice guy syndrome where this is part of it. We all know that all human beings one of their top needs is love and connection where people would love to be loved and they would love to give love and they would love to be in connection with people we are social human beings so we need to give to people and we need to receive from people so giving is something good you need to be a giver always but when it comes to being a giver all the time in relationship uh, sometimes people will accept it and sometimes people will not accept it some people will use you and some people will appreciate you let's dive in into being a giver a healthy giver and an unhealthy giver in any relationship selfless giving and never expecting reciprocation is always seen as a good sign and good thing but it in reality such kind of relationship often becomes a burden on yourself or, or, or on your partner. If there is no balance between giving and receiving, this is something, an eye opening for both partners to be reconsidering the way they are contributing to their relationship. For instance, when you are giving a gift to your friend, or to your partner and it is based on love or based on uh, being given unconditionally without any reciprocation for doing a favor for you or for supporting you in any event that's really something good however if you have linked your giving to control the other partner here where it comes a pitfall that you will be giving 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 and you don't give a room for others to give you back why you are doing it well for some people they feel their self-worth they feel that self-respect self-love confidence when they are giving they spread themselves too thin just to keep control of the other partner this is the way that they've been raised this is the way that they feel they are happy and they are they love others or to keep people around them this kind of strategy nice guy syndrome follow they give give just to keep control and to keep themselves busy within the circle that they live and do now does that make you happy does that make this kind of giving provide you with the love and connection you you want I doubt it because we have seen in many occasions that people will go away from such behavior. They start feeling uncomfortable. They start feeling that they are being used and they are controlled by the other party. That's why they get away from him. 
What happens when you always give and never get and never get back? Some people are natural givers. They always, it's, it's, it's their habit, okay? So since you are always doing favors to the receiver, they may feel pressurized and uncomfortable around you. And they will feel that you are always sacrificing yourself for them and you never allow them to give back this way and especially if they are unable unable to give you back in two ways one way that you don't allow them you don't give them room to pay back or they are financially unable to gift you back in both cases you lose them because they can't they can't really be alongside with you in the same way either they can not pay you back or you are not allowing them to pay back now why it is dangerous to be always giving there are many partners, selfish partners, who are going to utilize, utilize everything to keep you paying, to keep you gifting them. They will be happy. When you need them, they won't be around. They are busy. They are doing something for themselves. But they will leave you giving and sacrificing yourself for them and when you need them uh-uh they won't come to your help they are busy with their own stuff now <clears throat> when you are supporting a friend it's something why you are supporting him because he have done something for you earlier and you are appreciating that it's a mutual mutual things coming this giving is healthy and you should be proactive in appreciating the support and the help that is given to you and vice versa in both so please give and give room to receive now there are signs for being a giver. There are signs for overly being a giver. Remember, you are in a relationship, don't confuse, confuse over giving with love. In no way, in no mean, overly giving is love. Love, it has to be mutual. It's not only gifting. It's not only emotions. It's being available for your partner. It's, it's, it's what you bring to the relationship in feelings, in, in, availab in availability of yourself to give an ear, to listen, to, to, to help your partner to release his pressure and not to put pressure on them many people many people when they overly giving and being used by their selfish partner manipulative partner what do they think they think that they are not giving enough and they will start harder and harder to give more and more, exhausting, burning out themselves, pressuring themselves to give more and more. But this is not what they want. In this case, you need to ask your partner, is what you are doing is good for them or not? And when you feel there is a sign 
And when you start seeing or hearing signs from your partner that they are not happy with you or making you to feel not enough in your giving, here you have to reassess your relationship, to reconsider everything you are giving. Because this is not the way the relationship goes. It has to be mutual, mutual respect, mutual giving emotions, respect, their love, everything that you feel in a relationship has to be, has to be mutually given and taken. If it is not connected tightly from both sides, then there's a problem in them. And here in Dubai, we've been seeing this a lot, especially because, because of, the, of the way here people, expats are mainly, we are working to support our families back home. And when we are supporting our families back home, so we leaving behind. We we are sing we live single here to to just save more and more for our family back home, and we forget that not only money is support is other things. We've been seeing people. Last week, I've been with a client who came to me crying. He's crying, tearing down a lot. He says that I start feeling myself, I'm a bank. I'm just only an ATM machine and they just put in my mouth the de debit card. Even he, he took out from his pocket a caricature where a man is used his mouth as a slot for that debit machine and the cash comes out from his pocket where a woman is taking the cash and they go away. He starts he telling me, that's what I feel. They don't love me. I said, how your relationship was. It's, in fact, it's the fault of the person who, who managed, managed to let his family and his children to feel this way. He's probably busy working all day and not giving a room for a telephone call or for a visit to go back home every year or every six months, whatever is possible for a, an employee to do. And many people say that we've been here for last two years, three years, never been back home for, for a week. That will allow your family to treat you this way because you are not giving them what they really need. Not all the families need only money. They need to feel your spirit available with them. I do agree that there are partners who let you feel that, who let you down and keep pushing you. Keep pushing you to, to pay them monetary rewards, but not to give the feelings. And they don't give you back feeling or they don't support you in, in this manner. When this happens, you got to do something different. I do understand and it's a norm for all people to put their families first. But your family does not mean that their needs only will be met with money. And just today, today I had a client before coming to the live uh, appearance that he thinks he that's his perception that to be able to being loved by his partner and his children 
he needs to support his family financially. When I start with my session questioning him, what exactly did your partner told you? You need to pay, you need to, to, to give support us financially so we love you. He said, no. I said, did they tell you you need to work from six in the morning till nine in the evening? He said, no. I said, so how did this perception came to your mind? He said, this is our society. A man has to support the family. I said, yeah, but that's what you think. Is your partner needs? That's what they need, only money? He said, no. They need me to be around. They need me to support them at home, to help with children. I said, are you meeting those requirements? He said, no, because I'm busy working outside. I need to bring to the family to support financially. He said, but that's not what they need. You know, in these instances and in these cases, and especially now my talk to men, be aware and beware of these things. It's very important that all what the family need is not finance, is not money. You cannot monetize or you cannot make everything is money. No, your presence is a must at home with them, to listen to them, to play with them, to hear them, to take them outside. That's a real support, including the finance. It's not only always finance. Your presence, your love, your feelings is a must. In many instances also, there are manipulative partners who will let you to be outside all the time so you don't give that support to the children so they can be in a controlling relationship and we spoke about that last week and the week before in triangular relationship and controlling partner. There are partners who really uh, utilize your absence to control you and control the children and control the relationship. You need to be aware. These are signs of that you are overly giving and these are signs that you need to set boundaries and limits. Sometimes the receivers have started losing excitement. You are giving, giving, but the receiver is not excited anymore for your gifts. That's also a sign of that you are overly giving. Giving to someone is okay up to a limit. As we said, they start feeling, you know, some people, they start feeling suffocated and they start feeling unhappy after receiving from you. So please don't overly give it. That will make people away from you. And some people will use you because you are spreading yourself too thin. They will step on you. Or the signs of you overly giving when you keep your partner's wishes before your own. That's, that's something really is to think about. Why you would put someone ahead of you, even your partner, because you're going to burn out at some point. You, because you might expect something, expect and return something, thank you, and you will not get it because they are using you. You got to be aware of this. Or they've been also exhausted with how much you are giving. They won't say it. So be aware of all of these things because this is really things that very bad for a relationship. Yes, I understand you want to feel love. You want to give love. You want connection. 
but this is not the right way. We will come and we will talk about the solutions for this giving, overly giving. You think it's your responsibility to keep the relationship alive. That's also one thing is very interesting when someone is giving, giving, giving because uh, it is, you feel that it is your responsibility to keep the relationship alive. I, I, I really, I've been in this shoes. I've been in this thing, but it's really, it's a fear what keeps you doing this way. It's your fear that you're gonna lose connection. And in always, even fear of not being loved, what makes you to give overly giving, to give much more and more and sacrificing yourself, your time, your energy. It's you who is uh, keeping that or doing that with yourself. You can't fix a problem. You can't fix a connection or a relationship with giving. It has to be based on love, mutual love, not on love from your side. It has to be mutual. Or, or and also from the signs that when you match your likes with your partner likes. And we talked about this sign in the nice guy syndrome that on, on the pleasing side that you start matching your likes. What I mean by matching your likes? I mean, you suppose you love scrambled egg, but your partner loves omelette. So you start liking omelette. I'm just bringing it so, so pity on such little example, but it's a fact. It starts with little things. Everything starts with little things. They like popcorn with some flavor and you like it with another flavor, you start liking what they like. They like drama serials or movies, but you like comedy. You stop yourself sacrificing what you like for their likes. So in this way, when you start doing that to certain points, <clears throat> both of you will get exhausted because in the human needs, adventures and variety okay uncertainty variety is a need for human beings so if you if your partner or yourself keep doing the same thing it's boring you're gonna get bored both of you so you don't need to do that it's overly sacrificing yourself for for something you are unable to get in this way <clears throat> when you start feeling exhausted and resentful from all these relations that's also a sign and you see uh, i've been once in an event for tony robbins where he really illustrated in this on the same subject in a way I really was amazed that that he said overly giving is selfish. Uh, you know, I was surprised. What do you mean selfish in overly giving? He said, he tell, told us a story about uh, an event where he was dining with a partner, a wealthy partner, and at the end, he reached to his pocket to pay and his partner slapped his hand. He said, what a selfish person you are. Tony was really in a shock. What's happening here? He told him, are you going to rob me the opportunity to be a giver? That's selfishness. So overly giving Many people will consider it selfishness. 
because you are not giving room to get back. Now, solution for being overly, overly giving, set boundaries. And we have been talking about it in my previous live appearances a lot. Set limits for yourself and for others. It's, there are no way to avoid setting limits for overly giving and on sacrificing yourself, your time, your energy, for your partners. At some point, you're gonna burn out and you can't really be able to give. And you will just detour people from connecting with you. Don't, don't disappear in your partner's need. Don't disappear, I'm repeating it again, don't disappear in your partner's need. You have personality and your partner has personality and you have to be in between. You have to meet in the middle so you could both give and take. That's what life, that's what relationships are. I know there are many people who feel that giving is a contribution to the relationship. It is contribution to the society. It is in fact, it is indeed, but it is to a limit that you need to know when you're gonna step up as a leader and give and also you need to know to step up as a leader to not give it's a weapon you are shooting yourself when you are overly giving without any without any rewards back from your partners many people are now regretting their life that they spend doing the same thing over and over again, thinking that they are doing the right thing. In fact, they, they felt that they're being overly taken by their partners and they are unable to fix the relationship because that's a habit. Their partner's got a habit. And it's the function of the unconscious mind that it keeps everything by repetition. So overly giving, if you are doing it persistently, what the unconscious mind is doing is repeating this again and again. So your unconscious mind is already having the habit to give. And your partner has the habit to get. This is, and this is the real and the major contributor to a toxic relationship. And particularly if your partner, and particularly if your partner manipulated and doing that, that's how you are the responsible of destroying your relationship. Because you have created this habit and don't blame others for the relationship or your partner. You have done it. Fixing it is too hard. It's too hard and it will take a lot of time. 
and my two partner do not allow this to happen. You're gonna exhaust yourself to do that. Fixing a habit is harder than creating a habit. <clears throat> Especially with my example on the ATM machine client. He tried, he took, after 10 years of doing that, he went back home. He canceled his visa in Dubai. He said, I don't wanna work anymore. I wanna go and live with my family. He went for a year and two years. He said, I've been treated as a stranger in the family, in my household. He said he's been treated as a stranger. His children never came to him to ask for help or for money or for anything. They just asked their mother for everything they need. That's how they lived all these 10 years or so. He wasn't an active member of the family. Yes, he's a provider, but he's not there. They don't know him. He's a strange person. Don't be that person. It's painful for many people here. And the solution is keep doing it. If your partner really you have from the beginning established the right connection with your partner. Your partner must work on that with your children from the beginning. This gift is given by your dad. He sent it to us. This food we wouldn't afford if your dad did not sacrifice himself away to provide the food to provide these clothes, to provide this school. So it has to be established from the beginning, from the beginning of the relationship. You and your partner must set if you are going to be away. I know many women, many families, the woman will do that without being told and there were instances there were cases when i conducted a study on this before coming to you today i've been told by many people who passed the survey and the study and they said no that's how we lived before my parents my grandparents they always been working abroad and we were with the children and even we bought gifts for our children and we told them that your dad sent this to you and your dad did this to you we always kept reminding them with their dad that all this what we are living in the fortune that we are living in is because your dad working away but also, on the other hand, there are partners, okay, men and women, they do exactly the opposite, exactly the opposite of this. You see, I bought for you this. Yeah, but you don't have income and you or your income is not coming. You're not spending your income on, on the family. That's from the dad. So you have to appreciate that. You have to say that but they are manipulative, they are controllers, and we spoke about them in the last uh, last appearance. So today I'm just reminding you, you need to be cautious of such relationships. It being a destruction to families, divorces, and being really stressful for, for the three parts of the triangle, the father, the mother, and the children. And it's more destructive for the children future. You need to be aware of this. 
it never been in any family that one partner sacrificed his life alone for his children. It's always both parents been contributing to the family. It's unfair and it's sinful when one partner, one parent takes the credit for everything the other parent is doing. It's totally unhealthy. You are not destroying the family only. You are destroying the future of the children because they gonna think that that's how life goes and they will be, they will be raised on that. So when they create families, they will start doing the same thing. It's not always that they will find a giver husband that who will give up his dignity and who will give up his himself for this. It's not always. No. You need to be cautious in these relationships. Being giver is good if it is proactive but not if you are dragged to do that. If you are dragged to do that, one day you will burn out and you will give up everything just to get alive, to feel your respect, your self-worth, your self-esteem, your confidence, your dignity. So, you need to establish a limits for everything. You have to be, to tell the truth to your partner, sit both together, put a budget, put a plan for your life, how to raise your children, how to raise your children on a mutual respect, love, fairness, I hope that today lesson was an adding value, an eye opening for you to give yourself the time to think about your relationship, to sit down and see where you have done mistakes and to assess everything, all corners of your, your relationship. And I'm sure that you will reach to a conclusion that you need to fix something in your relationship and if your relationship is just based on love and mutual respect that's good I really hope that I added some value to it some eye-opening on something that you can improve in your life I really expect some feedback from you if I need to increase uh, or if I need to answer your questions my email is on a page please let me know I'll be more than happy more than happy to help you and to answer your questions thank you for being here or listening later on to my uh, recording enjoy your night be happy love you all